Welcome to worship. I'm Rick Peckman, ministry coordinator here. On behalf of the pastors, Gary and Deborah, and all the members here at Detroit Lakes United Methodist Church, I'm glad that you're joining. We are glad that you're joining us. Well, happy birthday, church. Well, I should say, or as you know, today we celebrate Pentecost. Pentecost comes from the Greek meaning 50th. 50 days after Easter, we as Christians are reminded that the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus' disciples and the birth of our Christian faith was born. So again, happy birthday. Let the party begin. Oh, I mean, let's begin worship. Please join me for the call to worship. The Lord said, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia! Our opening prayer. True and only light, from whom comes every good gift, Send your spirit into our lives with the power of a mighty wind. Open the horizons of our minds by the flame of your wisdom. Loosen our tongues to show your praise, for only in your spirit can we voice your words of peace and acclaim Jesus as Lord. Amen. Story for all God's children. Happy birthday. I mentioned in our welcome Today we celebrate the birthday of the Christian Church, Pentecost. Scripture will be read both in English and Spanish, and it mentions talking in tongue. There are so many different languages in this world. We are a diverse race of humans. But the cool thing is that God loves us no matter what. So as we celebrate our birthday, it seems just right that story for all God's children should be birthday wishes. Actually, 70 different uh, wishes in different languages. I have a little video for our story for all ages today. I hope you enjoy it. It's about a four-minute birthday, wishing all of us a happy birthday. Blessings. Happy birthday to you. Zum Geburtstag viel Glück. Te deseamos todos. Feliz Aniversario. Ukulilu hena. Thank you to Kahanida. Slamat Hari Jadi. Bailu ane sulle. Zum Geburtstag viel Glück. Feliz Aniversario. Thank you. 
lang zal ze leven, lang zal ze leven, lang zal ze leven in de gloria. In de gloria, in de gloria. Piep, 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 piep. Hoera. Hoera. It's just, I need like five other people because we like do a whole big thing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Bianca. Happy birthday to you. Molt an triasca, molt an triasca. Di geni, ra geni, di voyoti. Vot takoi shirini, vot takoi ujini, vot takoi vishini, vot takoi nijini. Karavai, karavai, kavo lubish vidirai. Uh, we don't have a bit this song in Ghana. We don't really sing a song. No. Oh no, not really. We usually just say happy birthday, but there's a way to say it. It's just really complicated. I can make up a song. Yeah. Can you tell me, is that common? Mm, no, really, people don't celebrate birthday. Chesty trosh den den. Sana hel wa ya gamil. Gratulera me dagen. Gnom rajdin ya tibia. Tavallo, tavallo, tavallo det mubarak. Nesadata kerida. Ya viska hon leva, ya viska hon leva. Sto lat, sto lat, niech żyje, żyje nam. Kumpleaño, feliz. Feliz kumpleaño a ti. Kumpleaños. Pedrito. Feliz cumpleaños, feliz. Te estás poniendo viejita, te estás poniendo viejita, te estás poniendo viejita. Solo te falta el bastón. Welcome to the Atlanta. Mutlu yular sana. Suglima, suglima. Vayan on the avan. Nazisis pavlako que chronia pola. Megalos na ginis me aspra malla. A las muchachas bonitas se las cantamos así. Chag la sameach vezer la poreach hayom yom uledet lechana. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday dear so and so. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear. Happy birthday to you. Yay! La Sagrada Escritura de hoy viene de Joel 2, 28 a 32. Después de esto... Derramaré mi espíritu sobre todo el género humano. Los hijos y las hijas de ustedes profetizarán, tendrán sueños los ancianos y visiones los jóvenes. En esos días derramaré mi espíritu aún sobre los siervos y las siervas. En el cielo y en la tierra mostraré prodigios. Sangre, fuego y columnos de humo. El sol se convertirá en tinieblas y la luna en sangre antes de que llegue el día del Señor, día grande y terrible. Y todo que invoque el nombre del Señor escapará con vida. Porque en el monte Sion y en Jerusalén habrá escapataría como lo ha dicho el Señor. Y entre los sobrevivientes estarán llamados del Señor. Our scripture today is Acts 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? 
Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to the Cyrene, and the visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you su suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. May these words become to us the word of God. Let us pray together. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of these, your children, O oh Lord, be found acceptable this day in your sight. For truly you are the rock and are the redeemer. Amen. There is an old story involving a ministry student before he took his first church. He asked his preaching professor what he should preach about. The response from the professor was swift. Preach about God and about 20 minutes. Well, it's good advice, isn't it? Grace and peace to you from God our Creator and the Lord Jesus Christ on this Pentecost day, in which I hope to preach less than 20 minutes, and we certainly will be speaking about God. Now, we have all heard sermons about God. Even persons who have only heard sermons at weddings and funerals have heard about God. Many hear sermons about Christ at Christmas and Easter, but fewer may have heard sermons about the Holy Spirit, whose day, Pentecost, we celebrate today with a church chancel in red. There may be a good reason why we have heard fewer sermons about the Holy Spirit. A preacher, after all, can easily speak about God, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, Revealed in the creation all around us, we often lift our heart to adore God the Creator, worship God's power and love, and stretch our minds toward an understanding of the holy. It is even more possible, I think, to speak about Jesus Christ, who translated divine qualities into the language of our human experience. We can talk about his life on earth, we can recreate the scenes in which Jesus encountered people just like us as he mixed with the crowds as a healer and teacher and invited persons to come into the new community he called the kingdom of God. We can visualize him easily challenging evil and closely interacting with men and women. We can talk about the stories he told, about God's expectations for us, and the grace that is offered us to turn around and convert our thinking and our hearts, placing us on the right path. And we can follow the story from the shores of Galilee all the way to the hill called Calvary and be even more amazed by Jesus' integrity, his compassion, his courage, and be awestruck by the mystery of his death and resurrection. But what can we say today about the Holy Spirit? 
Luke is the writer of the Gospel of Luke and also the uh, history of, of the evangelistic movement of the early Christians in the book of Acts. And Luke, the writer, struggled to describe the Spirit. Instead, he used metaphors in his description, perhaps because the events of Pentecost are really beyond description. According to the scripture, the greatest power in all of the universe was experienced on Pentecost. The Spirit was literally poured out. Listen again to the same story that you've already heard this morning, but this time from the tradition of the message. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, gale force. No one can tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. And then, like wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through the ranks. Now, Minnesotans and Dakotans know just a little bit about the power of wind and fire. Remember the sound of the wind during a raging blizzard? Recall the sheer raw power of a tornado? Can you get in touch with the uncontrollable power of a prairie fire? This spring, we have had many of all of those. This power and more is what the Spirit poured out upon the followers of Jesus is described as being like. But notice as a metaphor, like. We really can't even capture the magnitude of everything they experienced. And yet, wind and fire are not the point of Pentecost. Each faded. They're not mentioned again. What the scriptures, however, highlight is the effect of the Spirit on Christ's followers upon whom the Spirit was poured out. The Spirit gave the believers the power to speak in the native languages of immigrants living in Jerusalem. Powerful stuff. And yet, speaking in a myriad of languages wasn't the main gift of the Spirit either. The primary gift of the Spirit poured out was that the immigrants living in Jerusalem were able that day to hear the good news about what God had done in Jesus Christ, not in someone else's language, but in their own, whatever that language happened to be. Hearing about God was not dependent on understanding the Hebrew of the people in whose area they lived. They didn't have to know the Greek of the educated classes. They didn't have to understand the Latin of the Roman army and officials. They heard in their own language about God's love, God's sacrifice, God's power given through the Son, Jesus Christ. Now, certainly those present in Jerusalem had experienced nothing like it before. As one author says, the something that happened leaked out into the streets beyond. Passers-by were caught up in the sounds that they heard. Voices and words, what they heard was wrapped in the language of home. It made their hearts stop for a moment as they tuned in, listened, and caught words in their own language. Dr. Derek Weber, who is the director of preaching ministries for the United Methodist Church, shares an interesting story about a tourist in Germany. The tourist spoke nor read any German. Wandering off the tourist trail, he found himself in a very small village where he was having huge trouble communicating. He was about to panic. How would he find the next railroad? How would he get on the right train? What could he eat? He was always beginning to panic, almost, when he caught a sneezing fit. A passerby smiled, nodded, and said, Gesundheit! And the American rushed right after the man, yelling, Oh, good, you speak English! How we long for familiar sound, for the language of home, how we long for connection. Those in Jerusalem so long ago stopped and listened as they heard information in their own language. 
God, the Holy Spirit, was making those connections. The Christian body was being built. The Holy Spirit is expressed not in words, but, friends, in action. And the Holy Spirit tends to focus attention not on itself, but on the form of God experienced in the other two personages of what we call the Trinity. Jesus told his disciples that when the Holy Spirit came upon them, it would not draw attention to itself, but rather will glorify me by taking what is mine and declaring it to you. Experiencing the Holy Spirit is like experiencing the sun in the sky. We learned, didn't we, as children, that we were never to stare directly at the sun. Instead, we experience the sun by the life and light of the world around us. We look at the flowers, the rolling ocean, the shining rivers, and we determine that there is not only beauty in the world, but a source and a power. The Bible invites us to see the whole cosmos as throbbing with the life of the Spirit, to revere all of life, to respond to the deep mystery of creation as a silken glove in the hand of a life-giving spirit with whom we can be in touch. On this day, on this day that we call Pentecost, may we celebrate that we are all one people. We are all throbbing with the pulse of the Holy Spirit. And may the Spirit be poured out into our lives just as it was many years earlier for the early disciples. May we hear in our language the story of God's love and power. May we share that story in unstoppable proclamation of the gospel. And may our lives serve a hurting world. Remember, church, once the Spirit is poured out on you, You can't be quiet. You can't stay still. You've got to move and share and make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Amen? Amen. As we come to our time of prayer, let me precede it by sharing the joys and concerns as we know them. Please remember Jean Fredine. Betty Welch, Jan Campbell, Judy Nordhausen, Nancy Wickman, Jane Ballard, Dennis and Shirley Beshje, Dorothy Davis Buck, Camden Nelson, Wiley Bowerman, the family of Gail Johnson in her recent death, Sylvia Pichet, the Sorensen family, Chloe, Mitch, Britt, and baby Charlotte Zur, who had surgery earlier today on May 19th, and the family of Dorothy Graybow, who has passed and whose funeral is planned for June 24th here in our sanctuary. Please be aware that every person tuning in has their own joys and concerns. And let us begin our prayer time by praying in private so that we are just knocking on heaven's doors, but we spend time approaching God. Let us pray. O Holy Spirit, whose breath gives life to the world, whose voice is heard in the soft breeze, we need your strength and wisdom today. Cause us to walk in beauty. Give us eyes ever to behold the sunset. Make us wise so that we may understand what you came to teach and you have taught us. Help us to learn the lessons that you have hidden in every leaf, in every rock, in all of creation. Make us always ready to come to you with clean hands and steady eyes so that when life fades like the fading sunset, our spirits may come to you 
without any shame. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught his followers to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This week we celebrate with the following people. Happy birthday to Michael, Bonnie, and Becky. And this week at the church on Tuesday morning, we have the Bible group study that will meet at 9.30 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. And on Thursday morning, Reva's Bible study group will meet at 10 a.m. in the Fireside Room. Your offerings can continue to be given either by dropping them off with Beth in the church office, by mailing them directly to the church at 885 Pembina Trail, or by giving online to our website at dlumc.org. Thank you.
Let us rise as we can and enter into the words of our traditional benediction. Who are we? We are a missionary force of Christians. What do we do? Offer the care and compassion of Christ. To whom? To all. Where do we meet you? Wherever you are on life's journey. Now go forth in Pentecost spirit, and may the gifts of the Spirit be yours to help to transform a hurting world. Amen.